Okay, um, I am pleased to introduce to you Roland Dahlquist, and I'm glad that we have this opportunity to get to know him better and appreciate his very diverse art background and all he has to bring to our group. Um, I asked him to suggest a few things that uh, we would he would like us to know about him. He said that he moved here in 1987 and he established a Dahlquist illustration. Since then, he has won numerous awards for design and illustration from local uh, to international levels. He enjoys creating in many mediums, past oil, pastel, oil, watercolor, acrylic, mixed media, pencil, ink. He's done many illustrations for this book series called Clive Custler. I thought this would give you an interesting view of some of interesting things he's done. I picked these off of his website, uh, off websites and Facebooks. So I hope that he's glad I've shown you certain ones. He's also shown in galleries in Scottsdale and Phoenix. <clears throat> And I thought this was interesting. This is one of his Facebook po posts. I want you to see this clever mind at work. I'm embarking on my quest to make 100 four by six mini artworks. I intend to document my progress here. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the show. And I really liked this one. I actually meant to organize my studio specifically to put my recently used soft pastels back in their place. Then I spotted a piece of pastel board. And this is the one that he created. In 2003, he started teaching and taught 16 years at the Art Institute of Phoenix. He got a master's in fine arts and he is currently teaching at ASU, where he has adapted to online teaching. And fortunately for us, he's shared a lot of his um, tech skills with our group, which we appreciate. Um, he says that now he has, he is doing limited illustrations and focusing his energy on fine art and pastels have become one of his favorite mediums. Though his name uh, might be pronounced differently by some others, he said that he likes, or his name is pronounced Roland, and that his friends call him Raleigh. And so, Raleigh, uh, we are here. We acknowledge and appreciate all of your accomplishments, and we thank you for inviting us into your studio. Well, thank you. I. Uh... Yeah, you dug up a lot of dirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Save me the trouble of scrolling through a PDF. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, when Dodie asked me to do this, she said that she, it would be an opportunity for you all to get to know me a little bit better. <clears throat> and all I thought was, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> 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 yeah. I have had a uh, diverse indoctrination maybe but that's i always claim that it's because i'm a gemini and it's uh i i've gotta i've gotta try something new it's it's just in my dna so i i just love a variety and a lot of times it's uh my mood you know and, and when it comes to that finding a pastel board anything any excuse to not clean my studio. I'd rather make a painting than clean. So, uh, but yeah. I, I like I like to try different things. I can roll with the punches. 
Uh, anyway, I just, uh, variety is kind of my thing. Sometimes it's mood, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes <laughs> I get a commission that wants something, you know, in oil or pastel or depends on what I talk them into. <laughs> stuff and stuff. I'll try and get this so I can have a little better. Uh, <clears throat> simply because everybody wants to, um, even as a, as a painter, you know, there are certain people that you can look at their work and know who did it simply from the style. Um, I never really achieved that because <laughs> I've always changed styles and changed mediums and, but it's what makes me happy. So, oh, here's my, uh, my setup Stay. here, it's my, you know, I don't care what size box or bin you get, you never have enough. You always run out of room. And then below I've got another one that I actually have my uh, new pastels in. So it's all at hand. And this, uh, you know, box I can just carry over to my where am I? I'm pointing at my easel. No, <laughs> I can just carry it over and have that in front of the easel. And the card in front of there is on wheels, so I can move it from easel to easel and and um, be mobile, versatile. So that's a quick tour of my digs. Now it's also my living room and dining room. So uh, I'm not sure many people can get away with that. <laughs> it's also uh, maybe a clear indicator of the fact that I'm single and I have no one telling me uh, otherwise. <laughs> but I walked by here years ago and I looked in this room and I, I just thought there's no living going on in there. I live in my family room in my kitchen so I took it over and it's worked out very well. Okay, that's enough of that. Now, if I can uh, uh, share my screen, am I, have you got me set up so I can do that? Um, no, I don't think so. Hold on just a moment. Okay. Um, now you should be able to share your screen. Okay. So, um, you already preempted this with your with your presentation, but yes, I've done uh, illustrations for Clive Cussler novels for. I think I started in 2009. I'm currently working on my 20th title. So that's, that's been a goal. Wow. Now, if, we, if this continues because Clive Cussler did die last year, <laughs> but he writes with different co-authors. I'm not gonna spend much time on this, but so hopefully it'll keep going and I can get to 25, but <laughs> it's one of the areas that I, when I mentioned limited illustrations, this is uh, one of my l limited, um, I limit two. I don't wanna, I don't wanna stay in the business of illustration. That's a, it's a little annoying, but let's move on to Mother's Day. And what I did was I called through some of my old slides and such that have come down through the family and trying to figure out what to do. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this one. This would make a nice portrait. That's me, by the way. <laughs> and it's uh, interesting enough and it would have made a, a pretty cool portrait, I think. But I, didn't, I wasn't so sure about it. 
And then I thought about something that kind of gave some information or a clue as to my mom's personality. She was a, she was a good sport. I got some stories. <laughs> Poor thing. She raised uh, three boys, all weighed over nine pounds when we were born. <laughs> so she, I don't know. She had a rough, she had a rough. And, and my dad, he was pretty much another kid. So she had four boys to corral. But she was fun. And, but I didn't think that that, you know, I'd earmark that for kind of an interesting piece some, somewhere down the line, maybe. But then I ran across this. And I thought, this is the one. Because that's sending me off to kindergarten. I don't know if it was first day, but, and I also like the, uh, the composition here, the, the, you know, it's very graphic with its angles and, and such. And I, I've cropped it, so it's uh, got rid of some of the junk. But one thing I just wanted to uh, do before I get into any kind of demo was talk about if you know how to use Photoshop and you work from photographs a lot. One of the things that I do is <clears throat> photography or photos can tend to get a little um, muddled, muddy, uh, maybe not as, the, the lens of the camera will never resolve issues the way that your eye can. It averages light, it, uh, it may drop some things in shadows, you may lose some details and highlights, and things get a little blah. So it's not so much on this photo, but if you know how to use Photoshop, I will generally just click on a panel that's for your uh, adjustments and it's hue and saturation and I'll bump up the saturation. Now, because it's only a layer under this adjustment layer, I'm not gonna bother clicking this, this little icon, even though I just clicked it. What that does is it locks it to just the layer beneath it. And I'll make this quick because not everybody uses Photoshop, but anyway. And then I've got a saturation bar that I can just crank it up, obviously that's way too far, but I just wanted to show you. What, do you. what you can do is put a little of the vibrance, vibrancy, that's the word. I'll go with vibrance. Into it back into your photo because it's a little more, you know, if I, if I pick my colors that were in the photo that I was looking at, there's a tendency for them to get duller and darker and, and less vibrant with less saturation. So I like to artificially bump up the saturation a little bit in, uh, in certain pictures. This one doesn't matter so much, but it's kind of one of my rules of thumb to look into that early on. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. and go back to this. Now I've plotted out some of this a little more than I ordinarily would. And um, I also pulled a, a grayscale image. Is that in focus? Uh, I guess this is a short drawback to the having a manual focus camera. That's a little better. Mm -hmm. So I pull a grayscale or a black and white print and that kind of uh, aids in, you know, 
some of the values, even though it's a little bit dark. <clears throat> now, as a painter, I tend to uh, paint more a la prima. So <clears throat> I like to get color over the entire canvas. If I haven't toned the canvas, I want to get color. I want to get it blocked in as fast as I can so that I don't have that that white reflecting into my eyes as I'm trying to pick other colors. So, and being that my background has a lot of, of white, I thought I would use untoned white paper. Now this is the, uh, what's it called? That junk rat went all over the place. I got my dog up though. Um, I, I tried some of this pastel premiere. And it's a uh, 400 grit. Well, it says grit medium, but I like a, a 400. You know, if I'm using UART or something like that, I like a, a grabby or substrate. But anyway, point is, I've got a lot of white in the backgrounds here. So what I'm going to do is block in some of these darker colors. And with the bricks, I'm actually going to block in the, the mortar color and then apply the bricks on top because they are about the width of a new pastel. So I can vary the color, my, vary my browns a little bit to lay out that pattern. And I also wanna block this in and lock it down with uh, denatured alcohol with the mortar color because my hand might get in it, even though I've, I do have a little piece of uh, glass, uh, whatever this, glassine the rest my hand on to use as a cover sheet so I don't smudge up the rest and I will go back in later because I'm going to add some tone to the white areas because white's never white you know you might have beautiful white clouds in the sky but they're all there's always a little color to them because something's reflecting up into them or just a little uh, blue of the sky you know, you put it out over the desert, we get these oranges and, and other browns kind of bouncing up into the clouds. And so <clears throat> white's never really white. So I, I will address that. But it also, uh, because of the nature of my mom's dress and such, it gives me the opportunity to explore some lost edges, which are really, uh, uh, I love that kind of stuff. And also, it's pretty easy to figure out where the sun is, you know, because these shadows will, will send you a, a direct path up to your light source. So when it comes to my shadows, I can, you know, if I get lost a little bit, I can just follow some directions. And, and then that would be what I would do next is to, to map these shadows because a lot of times the shadows define form. Um, now, one other thing that was that you may find with uh, working with photographs is you you wind up getting some really ambiguous shapes. Like <clears throat> I was having a hard time figuring out what was going on with my mom's foot because it's uh, it's all dark in there. You can't really tell. So you have to use some, um, a little thinker, a little thinking. And I look in the shadow of me and I can see the end of my mom's skirt or dress, the hem. So I know that her knees gotta be up in here somewhere. So if we go back to some of the basics of measurement comparison and estimation, knowing that the human form is approximately eight heads tall 
I can go in here and measure my mom's head and knowing that the length of the leg is a, the, the thigh is about from the hip to the knee is about two heads. The knee to the ankle is about two heads. So I can get that back in her hip joint and I can see that, yeah, that's, that's a knee up there. So if I did two more heads down to the ankle, I can kind of figure out that that's, she's got, she's kind of almost sitting on her heels. So that would have to be the toe stuck up under the dress. It's one of the most challenging things working from photographs is you, you may think it, you're going to find an ambiguous form that you just, you know, it's easy to just fake it and, and, and scrumble in the, the, that color and just say, well, I hope nobody actually looks at that part. But you're always a lot better off just trying to um, <clears throat> work out those areas. So I've picked out a, a, a couple little colors to make this go a little quicker and I'm sure I won't finish this by any means, um, but I can get started on it and uh, have it done for next time or I'll send it into the, the site, send it to Doty and she, or whoever and they can post it on the website. But I wanted to find some uh, mortar color. Oh, and I, my, I've got pretty eclectic color. I'm not sold on any one brand of pastels. So I try a bunch. I like some, I don't like some as much. One that I really like is a uh, schmanky, but that gets me in so much trouble because it's so buttery that. So anyway, I'm just gonna lock in this. And I like using the sides. And like I said, I'm my bricks might be a little bit bigger than my reference because I think that this, the size of a new pastel will lay in there just nice. And I've got a bunch of different browns that I can mess with that, uh, where they fall. And I'm just doing the front surface here first. And I'll grind it in a little bit. Now I tend to be a finger blender. I did buy some of these things. They are um, actually uh, more like a makeup thing. They still don't. They still don't replace a finger. So I'll just uh, scrumble that in there pretty quick and then I'm gonna, maybe I'll uh, put in the, the darks of the windows. <clears throat> maybe I'll do that. And of course you gotta, sometimes, you know, I'll go in with paper towel like everybody does. That lifts a lot of the pastel and I wanted to keep it. So I'm actually going to put in my windows first, I think. And I'll lock them in separately. So you can see I'm going to be here. Now, if you look, there's going to be a black sill. And then there's a lot of blue reflecting in here. Well, I'm going to go with the, the darks and mainly that blue. And then that when I come back later, I can um, go in there with more of a, be a little strong. Uh, 
Oops, come on. Did I get the whole wrapper off of here? Oops, I'm stalling. Okay, back to the business at hand. So I'm not even trying to be careful. Not yet. And again, um, I'm gonna lock this down and then when I come back to tone the white, I won't have to worry too much about it causing me too many problems. And I'm only gonna do a couple of these windows because this is not figurative at all. <laughs> but I just don't wanna be smudging through it and uh, dragging my hand through. Color. Uh-oh break it I just don't want to hear any of that going on at my end and I'm shocked my dog hasn't been barking okay so got my little jar of uh oh, there you went and did it now It's like something I would do. I think everybody does it for at least once. This is also why I don't really like working flat. Because it, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have done that if it was on the easel because your hands away and just a note on when you're drawing you know if you're if you're sketching something out for an idea or something you know drawing on a flat plane you can get distortions because the distance from my eye to the front and my distance to, from my eye to the back of the page are different you know when you're working vertical your the distance of your eye from your surface is pretty much the same. So you will get some distortion just working on a flat surface. Just another little thing. Okay, back to this without smudging. So I've just got a nice flat brush here that And again, just the, the mortar color so that I can go in and apply the bricks over it. A lot easier than to, uh, you know, go back in with a, you know, a pastel pencil. Like a pastel pencil and dry in those lighter lines. <clears throat> I'd rather use the width of a new pastel to put the bricks in. So again, locking it down. Uh, maybe I won't bother with the other side just in the, just to be a little more economic in the, the time area. Cause I can't, I won't get over here to smudge. Now I want to just make sure I lock down these window reflections. And this way I can just go back in with whatever color I want. And it'll, uh, it'll take and I, I won't actually be blending into this color unless I uh, intend to. But Okay, that was not a question for me. Okay. 
Okay, so almost got this done. All right, so that's close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, they say. Now, one thing I'm going to do here, too, is I want to get in. You know, I still want to minimize the white that I'm seeing. Sure, I get the lid on this thing tight because it evaporates like crazy. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I would rather apply the marks to make my figure over the background than try to uh, put the background in around my figures because. Um, if we look at the reference, these are pretty hard edges. So if I tried to get the, the, the shadow and the stairway up to my figure, it's gonna, it, I'm still gonna have to go back and, and clean up the edge with my figure's outlines. So, <clears throat> I grab some uh, some grays. I'm trying to figure out if that's my dog making noise. So the tops of the stairs are actually darker than the front face. So I'm gonna just uh, might be a little dark. So I'm gonna run these in. Now there's no law that says you can't use a straight edge. Some people, yeah, I find that in school and stuff. You know, oh, you, you know, they think that doing things freehand means that you can't use any Whoops, sorry, mom. You can't use any uh, devices. But you can, it's legal. Uh, now I confused myself. So I'll check my reference. Okay, there's the top there. All right. And then again, I can um, you know, refine that. And if I need to, I can, uh, you know, I don't, <clears throat> I blend a little more in the under or the, the background work more than I would. in the, uh, when I get to the real figure. And like I said, there's these, these lost edges in around my, her shoulder, but there's a little bit of a, there's a pattern on the dress and it's got a little bit of, of blue in it. But I think I'm gonna look at the shadow being cast, and you'll notice, you know, the, the shadow cast by my hat is a lot lighter than the shadow cast by, it's probably part my mom and part me. So there's a, a, a value change here. Same with the, the, the shadows over here created by the, the stoop. 
you know, you're getting light bouncing off my mom's dress into that corner. So you've got that, there's some things going on in this shadow that aren't so much going on in here. So there's, there's subtleties and, uh, I know what it is. I'm not wearing my glasses. Jeez. No wonder. <laughs> no wonder I'm having a challenge. <laughs> so I'm making sure that I find the edge of my mom's dress and I'm just going to, and I'm going to, it's at this step that the, the value changes. So I'm gonna block in this color first. Okay. And then it drops down close to, close to my leg. <clears throat> and then I'll get the, the lighter grays the front of the stairs and you'll see there's the water is dripped i don't know if i'm gonna add that or if i'm just gonna not see it because comp compositionally i don't really need that pulling away from my subject matter even though it's all framed pretty well and it's it's like the only organic shapes within this very graphic linear background so jury's still out on the front of these steps. I'll probably eliminate that just because it doesn't help. It doesn't necessarily hurt that much, but it doesn't help. So I'm going to, I'll save that. I'll come down here and do the, the shadow form. And again, part of this is just getting rid of all of the Getting rid of all the white. Okay, so I gotta come down here. Come down here. <clears throat> come back here. Hopefully I got these stairs figured out. And it's almost like with an oil painting. You know, I uh make the color physically flatter in the background. And then as you come forward, you add texture. Um, hopefully that's right. Something like that. So again, I just want to so I'll do a little grinding here to just to flatten that out. And the beauty of pastels, as we all know, is you can always come back and fix it. Almost always. So now I would just need a little, just so I know where I am in, in the universe. I'm just gonna make this shadow. I still need another blue. This might be a little too light, but. And it's also <clears throat> one of the reasons I'm gonna come back in with the with some color in the whites because I'll need to clean up some edges like on the hat. So this is not going to be my final shadow color, but I'm just um, giving myself a little lighter area to work off of than dark. Uh, yeah. I might just mention that somehow the position has changed a little bit. And a lot of times now when you work your, the, um, the oh. camera is behind your head and it blocks out the picture. Oh. Okay. Thank uh, you. Okay. There, that might 
just that might help. Yeah, I'll just keep my head out of the works. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna just start <clears throat> block in. Uh, pants and jacket and get some of the form in there. It's a dark, deep blue, but it's not as dark as the shadows. Oops. Okay. I'm going to sneak in from the side here a little bit. Oh, that's uh, indistinguished between my mother and me. can try and move that a little bit too. That helps a little bit. Now I'm probably going to smudge this a little bit too, so don't be haters. It's just to get that background hue established. And like with a lot of things, I'll go in later and fix the edges. And then the trousers. So just like with all these things, they sort of build themselves. Go one shape to one shape to the next. Oops, I'm doing it again. Maybe I need more binocular glasses than reading glasses. <laughs> And again, just to give it a, grind it in a little bit. It's my base coat, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. <clears throat> now, you know, you're always looking for shadows. And granted, this is in pretty direct sunlight so the shadows are pretty harsh, but they're also not that evident, like the, the more Rembrandt lighting that was in the photo I showed you where my mom was holding me as a swathed infant. And by the way, I'm going to put some of the, the reflected light back into the shadows on the stairway, because you can see along this uh, this top stair where it gets, maybe you can't see it on the photo, but you get some reflected light in there. So I, I will attend to those. Um, you're probably not gonna see it in this demo because I can't take all day doing this, but I wanna lay in some just initial skin tones And I like with all this stuff, if you have any questions. I have a question, Roland. Do you always start with a very detailed sketch? No. It's one of those rarities. Uh, part of it's because I knew I was doing a demo. <laughs> and part of it was because of the graphic nature of this. Right. I just wanted to get those a little more definition. No, usually I'm, you know, just like everybody else, you know, you mark a line here, you mark a line here, you know, that's the bridge of the Noah, uh, back of the head, 
you know. Right. So no, not usually. And in some ways, it's a little, uh, and I'm not going to say that it's uh, hindering, but like I'm even finding it here because I did it more, more of an intricate or detailed plotting. Then now I'm getting absorbed in, in the, the details too, which is, that that's not a good thing to do. Stay free. And I got to come down for the shoulder. There's clavicle over there. A little bit of the neckline there. So again, I just try to block in the colors. And I'm probably going to do her dress um, a little later to when I can start bouncing the lights um, back and forth. Let's see, what did I, oh yeah. Got a little shadow here of my little arm. And I just find a clean enough finger to. I can walk away from the chance. I don't need to be on all the time. And again, I'm just beating that down a little bit so the next color will take. And it's also just, uh, you know, like I say, the blocked in colors. I can put a little tone in her hair. Now, because of the hairstyles of the day and the way my mom's wearing her hair, you can get away with a real scrumbly edge. Actually helps. And when I said I was going to put some color in the in the white, that's very. Um, when I'm talking about color, you know, if I was going to use more of a, a gold, you know, it wouldn't be any darker than that. Probably lighter still, or. <clears throat> because there is kind of a blue cast because of the daylight, you know, maybe something. See how that looks. I'm just going to test this. That might be a viable. Yeah, you can hardly tell. So I might uh, I might use a little more of that in the whites. See what I'm saying? Camera's not picking it up very much, but it might even be a little bit too much. Although I'm gonna put this in my little bin because I've already used it. So, and I that's my habit. As I pull colors out of my box. Then when I, if I've used it in this piece, I'm going to put it in this bucket. That way I'm not picking different ones all the time. And then again, like I said, there's some, you know, different tones going on in the window back here. Some darker, some lighter. I've got the front of the steps to deal with. But I'm going to do that with a little more crispness so that I can define the 
the shadows and the flats. Oh, I see I got another step down here. Oops. Yeah. Can do that later. I guess you don't need to see that last step. Now I'm getting, now I'm rushing, so I'm getting sloppy. And again, yes, I just blew on it. I know. I ordinarily will dip it up and give it a wobble. And again, you're better off working on an easel. And sometimes I've even got a French easel over there that if I'm really being lazy and I want to be vertical but sitting, I only half assemble it. I don't pull the legs out and just set it on the table here. So I still have vertical. I'm gonna just sort of fake her shoe in here in my shadow color. Oops, my head's in the way again. Yep. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Now, I thought I pulled the like a white lilac. I'll go in here with a just kind of a light lilac color. And then of course there's some edges and shadows that need to be blended in or around and I'm staying away, especially up in the shoulder, oops, from that edge, because I like the way that it disappears. But more in the hip area, I can lay in some color. And this is also gonna be something that'll help me determine how much tone I'm gonna to put into the white areas. I'm gonna put some, but I still haven't determined that yet. And back to that blocking in or that, if I'm doing a landscape, I, I hardly do any mapping. I'll just find those big shapes and block them in. And again, this, this layer, I'm going to move around a little bit just to give a more of a flat tone, a surface to work as I build it up. But whenever, whenever you're in doubt, Okay, I need a little bit darker of that color now for this side where the, considerably darker, where the skirt pokes out from behind my jeans. So I'm gonna try something like this. Uh, it's a little too dark. about like this. I'm gonna go with it for the time being. Yeah, you're always checking yourself as you go. I don't get too bunched up at this point, you know? There's, there's nothing critical at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Because I can always go back in and, and uh, nudge an edge, introduce a different color. But one thing I want to do is I want to get it covered in color. And by the way, I, I work with tone paper. And I, I'm definitely, I bought some uh, 
pumice medium stuff. I want to try that that acrylic base thing that Rita was doing. I'm going to try that. Rita Kirkman, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she did some good stuff. Yeah. I just like that, uh, you know, having that acrylic, acrylic base is you could almost wash the pastel off because of the plastic surface of the acrylic, sort of, so to speak. Now, <clears throat> there's some edges that uh, need to be defined in the shadows, you know, along the chin. And this is where, you know, a, a, a piece like this, it's a little more Get on. challenging trying <laughs> to get into the, into the corners. You know, if it was a full face kind of portrait, you got a lot more room to define those edges. So along the lines here somewhere, I'm gonna try these bad boys. I got a new set of pastel, Faber Castle, however you say it. Faber Castile, I don't know how you say it. Got a bunch. So I'm gonna try them. A lot of times with the new, new pastels, I'll go in there and actually sharpen an end. But, so, and I'm kind of jumping around here and speeding through some areas. Because you've got the, the shadow of the eye socket, which is kind of included in the eyelash. And so it's just sort of a darkened area. Now you've got some subtle form shadows here that will uh, very soft edge. If you my my head in the way, if you look in the cheekbone, you know very subtle uh, hue change. But hue change nonetheless. A little bit of nostril. So I would uh, <clears throat> need to get a shade that's just a little darker than that. And then I can kind of clean up the edges. Hopefully I'm not driving you crazy jumping around like this, but welcome to my world. And you know that the collarbone area, that clavicle, that's always a, you know, something to keep an eye on. And our the tones here, I'm gonna try and separate our chins with just that shadow, because there's not much else. There's some subtle cheekbone hue change here, value change that I'll have to be a little more critical on. So I don't want to attack it. I don't want to attack it right now. And then there's some hair down there. This heads off into the, the disappearing edge. Just a little bit of Highlight on me or a little bit of work on there. <clears throat> but I can get in there. These aren't bad. Maybe a little hard. Yeah, I'll keep them. And then of course, you know, I've got the, you know, the reds and the and I gotta put a the the color here in the the shadow of, or the um, continuation of the hemline. 
that's way too purple. I got to kick that back. Gray that out some more. That was a bad choice. And then do the details of the, the you know, the stripes. And just curiosity's sake, I want to, um, like I said, I've got another drawer binny thing that uh, for my new pastels. So, so like I said, and bricks are easy because all you need to do is if you got it's a brick in a space, the next row, you just do the same distance, but you do it from the middle of the brick above. So brick walls are, are easy, and that's why I thought I would just do the mortar color first. And some of the bricks are different colors. It may not be exactly the same. So that's not a good one. And that's not the part that everybody should be looking at anyway. So <clears throat> just checking to make sure my theory is working. What the heck's going on outside my house? Maybe I got a delivery. So I didn't do this window yet. <clears throat> I mean, same theory, but like I said, I'm, I'm probably not gonna get my hand up there. And um, as I do this, uh, I'm probably gonna take an eraser to this because I think that tone of my blues is is too much. I think it needs to be even lighter. It may not look like it on camera, but um, I think it's a little dark. And then, by the way, just the, there's a pattern in the in my mom's dress. Let's see if I can get this a little closer. If you can tell, probably can't tell. But there's like a little floral pattern. And I run into this all the time as. Uh, you know, people get their nose down on the on the substrate and they're trying to make these exact little shapes. Come on now. You don't need to do that. That's more in the purple family. So it's just, you know, basically little uh Do hickeys. I'm sure that's a technical term. Can't see you again. Ugh. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, just keep hollering it out there. Okay. Sorry about that. But I'm just, um, you know, just throwing these things out there. Now, this might be one that I would use uh, maybe a little more. You know, not this one because it's well, maybe this one because it's a little smudgy, but this is one that I might just to break it up so that it's very subtle because it's very subtle in the dress. And sometimes you can use these to help define those folds and wrinkles by just, <clears throat> you know, there's a there's a crease here, there's a value change here. So I can just come up here with a little of the darker color to indicate that, that wrinkle. And then, um, you know, if I just put my pattern 
a little bit more together here as that as this one rolls up and kind of this is getting caught on the back of her leg between her thigh and her leg so i could actually use some of that patterning to help define that that form but it's basically just scrumbling in little things that kind of look like it you know i'll get a little more conscientious about them you know as i go into trying to finish all of this off and now i'm just trying to bring up some of the background lilac to the edges there i'm going to blow on it again don't hate me so it's a very subtle little pattern that just you know, you, you hardly see it, but it's there. So you can kind of treat it that way as you're creating it. And then, you know, once I get the whites toned, then I can go in and define some of the, uh, well, there's a couple things I'm gonna do with shadows, like the framework of the door, the 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 sill of the windows because these pop out you can put screens in in the summer and storm windows in in the winter you know the door jam some of the molding work it's just a faint shadow that defines those so once i get this all the right color then i can just go in with a slightly darker and just do the little shadow pieces and that'll set off this whole background to look like what it should. Now, the other thing are the bricks. You know, we know where our sun's coming from. So likewise, each brick along the top edge is gonna have a little bit of a highlight, which you're not gonna see that much, but under each brick, you're gonna have, and along the, the right-hand side, you're going to have a little bit of shadow. So just as an example, I don't know if this is the, I don't care what color it is. You know, under that brick, you're going to get a little there, a little there, a little there, a little there. I don't know if you can see that either, can you? So each brick gets a little, and you don't have to be, uh, this doesn't need a straight edge because these bricks are manufactured so they can have a little bit of a, you know, broken edge. But anyway, I would continue on with the, with the brick work. And now I've kind of got something that I got to clean up later because I should have just grabbed the right color instead. So what time is it? Am I going long? It's 3.07, so um, maybe 10 more minutes or? Yeah, I don't know what to, uh, I guess I could readdress some of this shadow over here because this is to kind of get that color change, but there are some you know, there's an edge in here. I'm in the way again. And then I can bring that around and save it up for some, bring some more of that color. And then I'll, <clears throat> when I go back in with the background color, uh, you can see that it's kind of a brick edge got kind of a brick shape to the shadow. That's one I'll do when I come back in with the lighter edge, the lighter color for the background in this case. But I wanted to get the figures in there. Um, so I can, I'm particularly interested in this lost and found edge stuff down here. 
So that's going to dictate some of my color in the background, which I'll carry through. And then I can detail it a little more with some of these fine lines. It's another reason I did a little more extensive plotting. And then of course, <clears throat> you always wanna pick good reference if you're gonna work from a photograph. Now this is just more sentimental because it is me and my mom. Um, but I've also picked something that, you know, I'm gonna have to discern a little more carefully. You know, the shadow of the sleeve, there's, there's some little highlights in there. There's a white stripe going down the sleeve, which will, if you just, um, you know, if you take that white line and you just, you know, follow the, the wobbles of it, it pretty much then shows you where the, the, the wrinkles are. So you can make some uh, educated guesses as to which side is getting a little bit of highlight. But it's, it's, a, it's a dark area, so I'm gonna have to discern some of these areas. But I wanna finish this one because it is, a, uh, it is Mother's Day and it is my mother. And so uh, maybe not the most brilliant reference choice for figurative, but hopefully you can get the idea of uh, how I build something. Roland, when you're completely done with it, will you send it to me so I can put it on the website? Yes, I intend oh, to. Good. Yeah, send it to Sharon.fry, gmail.com. And I'll probably take a picture of it now. Oh, that's a good idea. Because this is where I'm leaving off with you guys. And then you can compare it to the, the finish and I can uh, maybe even tell you a little bit about what I did to finish it off. Good. So I guess that's uh, it's enough from me. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have some questions or comments? Go ahead and unmute uh, and go right ahead and question or comment if you'd like. Well, Roland, I thank yeah. you very much. It was fun. Hopefully, to... hopefully it wasn't just a waste of time for everybody. Oh, not at all. And it's fun to feel an artist think things through. Mm -hmm. Does everybody feel the same, you know? And it's always reassuring to hear you say, no, that one wasn't quite the right choice because it's so reassuring to the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> so It's mostly wrong choices. <laughs> yeah. And so, I, do, I do know that uh, from being a teacher for so long, I do talk through the demos and try to tell them exactly what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, I pay a price for that as like I'm talking, so I'm not totally focused and it uh oh, whatever you get what you get mm -hmm.